Okay, here we're going to be looking at the consolidation using a cost method, and it's going to be for year two after the acquisition. Now, uh, this procedure here could be used for any subsequent years, like three, four, or five, and so on. And we're going to be using a consolidation worksheet. So the first thing we have to do is align our investment account here, the apparent their investment here in the subsidiary corporation with the equity accounts here for the parent and the uh, subsidiary. So our investment account here uh, is sitting at 1 1 or the January 1st of the first year here of the acquisition. And that is based on the fact that I, using the cost method, this investment here is maintained at its original cost. And in this case, it was 1 1 or January 1st of uh, X1 of the first year. And our retained earnings here uh, is based on the current year here. Uh, it would be 1-1 one, one of year 2 or X2. So we have to make an adjustment here uh, to adjust our uh, amounts here for the date adjustment here between the investment account and our uh, equity account here. So first, we'll, let's look at our retained earnings here. Uh, in this case, it was 344000 here for the corporation P. So looking at our retained earnings here, that's at the... Um, current year here of the uh, January 1st of the second year or year X2 and what's included it included here for uh, year one now in this case using the cost method the parents percent of the subs net income here for year one is not included and that happened to be fifty four thousand dollars and then the parents dividends are received here from the sub uh, sub declared a dividend that was included here for eighteen thousand dollars so just taking the difference between the two here uh, the total income that's not included for year one is thirty six thousand dollars so we're going to have to make an adjustment for that amount between our investment investment account up here and the equity account. Now just to refresh our memories here, the cost method, the income is recorded only when the dividends are declared by the subsidiary and for year X1 the income is recorded for the dividends received of $18,000 but not for the parents percent of the net income that they would have been apportioned out here for $54,000. So that we have to account for in our adjustment. Okay, in order to get a date alignment between the investment account and the equity accounts, we're going to convert this investment account up to the uh, January 1st of the second year, uh, which would match the equity account here. And we're going to use a simple equity balance, and it's calculated as follows. So this is the equity conversion. We take the retained earnings of the subsidiary at the beginning of the current year, which would be January 1st of X2 or year 2, and that amount here is $180,000. And then we compare it to the retained earnings at the date of purchase or that would be at the original costing date here and that would be January 1st of X1 or year 1 and that's $140,000. So the difference between the two here would be the change in the subs retained earnings of $40,000. Now the parents ownership percent would be 90% in this case so the equity conversion here with the parent would be $36,000. So going over to our worksheet here we would increase or debit our investment here in the sub subsidiary for $36,000. That's your investment account here. And then the balancing amount would be to credit uh, retained earnings here for the parent uh, corporation here for $36,000. So what we've done here is we've brought this investment account here up to the uh, date here of our equity account here of January 1st of the second year. So they're matching now. All right, our remaining eliminations using the cost method would be the same as for the equity method, except that the current year parents percent of the sub's income would not be recorded. So what we have to do here is elim eliminate in the uh, parents portion here of the investment in the subsidiary's equity, and then the excess of the fair value over the book value. So going down to our distribution schedule here, we have the parents portion here at 90% of the book value of the equity, but we can't use the distribution schedules amount here for retain uh, for this equity account here because uh, the change 
uh, there's been a change here in our retained earnings from year one to year two. So we got to work off the worksheet here. So going over to our worksheet sheet, the common stock here of, for the subsidiary, 90% uh, of that would be $90,000. And then the retained earnings, 90% uh, of that would be $162,000. So we debit our adjustments here for those amounts. And then the balancing amount here would be to credit the investment in the subsidiary here for $252,000. Okay, next for, to distribute our excess of the fair value over the book value. The total amount here was for $60,000, and that was due to an increase in the building. And then we had uh, the parents' portion here at 54000 or 90%, and then the non-controlling interest would be the remaining amount here for $6,000. So going up to our worksheet here, uh, we would credit a debit or increase our building account here for $60,000, and then the balancing amount would go to uh, credit or reduce the investment here in a subsidiary for $54,000 and then the other credit would be to uh, retain earnings here for this subsidiary for $6,000. Okay, next we have to account for our amortization. Now, the only thing we're amortizing here is a building or we're depreciating a building, and we have to account for both the current year X2 here and our prior year X1. So we have to account for uh, the, the current year plus all the prior years. So in this case, it was $6,000 per year. So we'd go over to our building account here, and we'd credit that or reduce that here by $12,000. And that includes both uh, the amount here for the current year and the prior year. So we got 6000 per year times two years. That gives us $12,000 here. And then the balancing amount would be to uh, debiting here uh, first for year one here, and that total amount here has to be for $6,000, and that's split between the parents 90% and the subsidiaries 10% based on the percentage of ownership. So going over to the retained earnings account here for the parent, we'd debit that for $5,400, uh, the 90% amount, and then we debit the retained earnings here for the subsidiary for $600 or uh, the 10% amount here. And then finally, for year two here, we would uh, debit or increase our building expense here for $6,000. Okay, next to calculate our income here for the consolidated income statement. So looking at the sub here, the subsidiary Corporation S, they had revenues of 100000 expenses of 124000 So looking at our income distribution schedule, they have an internally generated loss in this case because the expenses exceeded the revenues here by $24,000. And then they had a building amortization for depreciation here of $6,000 for the year. So our adjusted loss here would be $30,000, the sum of those two. And then the non-controlling interest share would be 10% in this case uh, times $30,000 adjusted loss here gives us a non-controlling interest here for a loss of $3,000. So we would uh, show that here in our consolidated income statement. Now looking at the parent corporation here, they had revenues of $200,000, expenses of $160,000. So going over to our distribution schedule, they have internally generated net income here of $40,000, the difference between the revenues and expenses. But they also have to absorb here uh, 30 or 90% here of uh, the corporation or the sub's losses here of $30,000, which would be $27,000 in loss here. So taking the total here between the generated net income and the loss here from the subsidiary, the controlling interest here would have um, $13,000 gain or income earned here. And that would be what would be recorded here in the consolidated income statement, $13,000 here for the parent or the controlling interest. Okay, in summary, when using the cost method, this investment account here in the subsidiary by the parent would be maintained at its original cost here. And we have to make uh, equity conversion here to align this investment account here with the equity accounts here for the parent and the subsidiary. And the other thing that you have to remember here using the cost method, only the dividends that are declared by this subsidiary are recorded as income, uh, but they don't record the percent of the parent's net income that would normally be re received here from the subsidiary.